Today I'm going to show you how we went from just an idea to a working web app using AI. In just under an hour, I was able to build a web app that integrates with a Superbase database and has user authentication. Today I'm going to be using Hostinger Horizons. This is the new AI-powered software development tool created by Hostinger. I've been using Hostinger for my email and personal website for over six years now. So when they reached out to try this new AI-powered tool, I was super excited to see what it can do. For what I've seen so far, this is a great tool if, for example, you've always wanted to create a startup but didn't really know where to start. You can easily use this to move really fast and have a working web app today that you can share with users with just one click and you can start getting user feedback right away. Or let's say you do client work and you want to present a working prototype to your clients really fast, Hosting your Horizons can 10x your speed and help you deliver faster. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I build this web app live and you'll see exactly what kind of prompts I use and how I set up everything to make it look like this. This is the landing page of Hosting your Horizons. So uh, here is where you'll put the prompt. You can even see some inspiration down here. I already know more or less what I'm going to be building. I'd like to have like a productivity dashboard and I wanted to have some to-do list and some journaling space. This is gonna be my prompt. I wanted to create a journal called Daily, which is like a dashboard containing a daily to-do list section on the left and a section on the right, which has a journaling text div and below it, a mood tracker consisting of five emojis. Pretty straightforward. I also wanna give it an example of a UI that I really enjoy. So there's this app called Things3. I use it on my phone a lot and it's just a to-do list app so I wanted to use this as an inspiration for a more minimalist look. So I'm going to copy it there and I'm going to say, give it a slick design following the aesthetic of the image I've attached. So let's see what it can do. I can see it's generating some React code in the background. You can always upload this code anytime you want, just so you know. You go here and you can hit export code and you can export it and see what's going on really underneath. In fact, before you deploy this to production, I would really recommend you to actually check out what code it's generating, making sure that it's secure and it's safe for going to production. Don't forget that this is AI, so it's really powerful, but it can also make mistakes. So just make sure that you double check everything it does before moving into production. Okay, so this is not bad, but I'm not sure I like the fact that this is on the side. I would want this to be more balanced and make the daily to-do list a bit wider. So now I've prompted some adjustments so that it can move things around. Let's see what it can come up with. Okay, so this is much better. This is literally what I wanted to do. You can see the background is different, so we want to adjust that. Let me see, test. What happens if I add many items? Oh, it just expands this div. I don't like that. Okay some more adjustments let's say when there's many items in the to-do list please show a scroll bar on the right side and then make the background of the to-do list the same as the other section because the color was a bit off now let's see if it works okay now it actually scrolls and I actually like the progress bar. You gotta be a bit patient here and you wanna be very detailed because when you don't specify something, it's gonna try to make it up and you wanna be as specific as you can so that it follows your guidelines. So in this case, I'm gonna give it more tweaks. Now I said to add a gradient to the progress bar to make it a bit cooler. And I also said, please shorten <laughs> the length of the to-do list because it was getting way too long. So let's see if it's able to do it. Okay, quite good. So it managed to match these two. And now make the gradient go from blue on the left to green on the right. Make the check box squares with corners. It's usually better to just give it one change at the time but since these changes are all related to the same area i'm confident that it's gonna do it quite well okay you see that was quite good already the thing that i don't like it's the font that's pretty ugly so let's change it for another font that i like better so for example let's say can you use the font avenir black 
instead. I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to pull out that font exactly, but let's see. Okay, it's saying we can offer a super similar and equally sleek alternative like Montserrat. Okay, I don't know what happened, but now it was able. Okay, so I told it to try to import the Avenir font instead, and it told me it couldn't, but somehow it managed to do it. This is the Avenir black font that I wanted, so that's perfect. Let's see if it works here as well. Amazing. This is looking so much better right now. Okay, that works. That works. Can you add an auto save to the journaling section to signal that the content has been saved? Because right now it's a bit like you have the text div, but nothing is being saved. So I don't like that. Cool. Really nice. I'm really enjoying this actually. And now if I change this, love this. I'm really impressed. So now that we have this, I really like how this is looking, but I also wanted to have a dark mode. So let's see if it's able to pull this off. I'm not sure if it's gonna be able to do it, but let's try it, why not? Okay, so now I wanted to follow the colors of this other screenshot. I'm using things three as a reference because I really like the aesthetic of this app. Actually, I should have said it to add a dark mode and not making it dark mode because now it's gonna think that I want it all to be dark mode. Okay, so that's what happened. I should have said add a dark mode. So you can see that my prompting was not good, but the good thing is that we can restore this version. We can go back and prompt it again. Okay, so this prompt is much better. As you can see, when you click restore, it will go back to the previous version. Now I'm gonna reprompt it again with the proper prompt and let's see if it's able to do it. Okay, let's try. I'm not sure I love this animation, but the fact that it's working, it's already quite impressive. Okay, so let's try to make this more functional by adding a calendar because right now I can only write on this day. So that's not useful. Also, just FYI, you can also edit the text that you see in the preview from here. So for example, this, I wanna change this to to-do list. Can hit save and it's done. So easy. You don't even have to prompt it. Cool. So now let's add a calendar function. Okay, so let's see if it's able to add the calendar. Now I'm gonna prompt it to, in the calendar, we want it to highlight the dates that have actual content in them. And I'm asking it to just make up some dummy content for the purpose of this MVP. And I told it to make the dummy content in the month of August of the year 2025, just in case it goes and creates some random content in the year 2023 and I'm not able to see it. I'm trying to be more specific. Okay, let's see if this works. Okay, so it created some random content entries in these dates. And if I go to today, and if I go to the test, but then I change dates and I go here, it has some other content. Really cool. So this works quite well. Also in dark mode, I would make the calendar a bit bigger. Okay, I'm giving it some guidelines to adjust the calendar. Let's take a look. Okay, that's better. Now let's say, feel free to make the numbers content inside the calendar a bigger size. Okay, so now it's well balanced, that's good. I can see that depending on the month, the calendar expands. So let's fix that. Perfect. Now, no matter the month, it will show the month and the year always on the same place. As you can see, you gotta be a bit patient and like really prompt it through the whole process. It can be a bit tedious, but it's honestly like still way faster than doing it myself. Okay, so now I want a statistics page that I can open with an icon here. And this statistics page has to show how many tasks I completed per day in a month. Now let me look for some examples of graphs. For example, this one is really cool. I'm gonna screenshot it and I'm gonna paste it here so that it has a reference. 
Let's see. Let's see if it was able to do it. Wow, this is so cool. Is this accurate? So on the 9th of August, we have no tasks. So this is accurate. I'm just adding random stuff. So let's say I complete one task. Now I go here. I go to the 9th. One task. If I complete all of them, let me just add a bunch of them. Amazing, it worked. How does it look like in dark mode? I wonder. Even cooler, honestly. This is so nice. I love this. Literally like with one prompt and one picture. That goes to show the importance of adding images to your prompts. This is really nice, honestly. I'm seriously impressed. So yeah, I think in terms of features, this is already fairly good, but now everything is being stored locally and we don't want that. We want to use an actual database to store all this content. So for that, we're going to be using something like Supabase. It gives you database authentication and many more features, and it's used by so many companies and especially startups because it's very easy to use and it's also scalable. So I'm just going to pretend that I have no idea about what I'm doing and I'm going to ask Hostinger Horizons to actually help me integrate the database into this code. Hopefully it'll be able to show me the steps. Okay, so it says, click the integration button in the top right corner of your screen. Cool, okay, connect. Okay, now I have to create an account in Superbase. I've already created a Superbase account prior to this, by the way. Okay, that's perfect. So let's do it, connect. So now it's connected to my Superbase account and it will start creating the whole database structure. It will do everything for me. So now we can see that it created a sign up page. So I guess I can sign up because I don't have an account. Let me just sign up with whatever test, test. Okay, password should be at least six characters. Fine, so test, Elsa. Okay, so sign up. Did anything happen? Oh, I got an email. Superbase account. Follow this link to confirm your user. I literally just got an email. Confirm your mail. If I go to database, you can see that there's the whole structure here with ID, user ID, date, journal, blah, blah, blah. And what if I now want to see if I'm authenticated? Okay, we can see my account was successfully created. Let's say I want to sign in. Okay, it's showing me some errors here. I don't know what that's related to, but sure, let's send it. It has a quick fix button, so let's see if it's able to fix itself. Okay, so I can see that I can now sign off. Let me try it again, sign in. Amazing, it worked. And actually, if I go to Superbase, I can see in the authentication section that it has correctly signed me up. And now it should be storing all the data in the right place. So let me try with test. And now if I go to the stats, perfect, it shows there. And if I put some content here, saving it, and I'm feeling happy, it shows here as underlined. And if I go to another date, let's say the other day I was feeling sad, but I did the task. And if I go to the calendar, I can see that those are there. And this shows up, amazing. And now let's double check that this information is actually inside the database. So now if we go to the table editor, we can see that there are some data in here. We've got a couple of entries with different dates. And here's a bunch of tasks that I added. One of them has an empty journal entry and the other one has a test one. The mood is status four or one, this one for happy and this one for sad. This is perfect. It's working. It's actually storing everything in the database and I literally had to do nothing. Like it created the structure for me. It added the content properly. It did the database connection. I'm seriously impressed at the fact that it managed to connect to the database on its own, create user authentication, the structure of the database, it thought about it on its own. I didn't have to tell it, hey, use this structure. No, like it literally created it on its own. As you can see, it was actually very easy to create a working app in under an hour. Just by prompting it and asking it questions, we were able to integrate it with Superbase and get a database and authentication in place. You could even integrate it with Stripe payments if you wanted to. What I would recommend is that before you deploy this to production, please export your code, do your due diligence, 
license to make sure that it's safe to publish and make sure that you're not leaking any API keys and things like that. These LLMs are extremely powerful, but they're still not perfect. As you can see, we can now hit publish and in one click, we'll have published a web app that is gonna be available for everyone to use. I think the big benefit of hosting your horizons over other options is you can build host and even get a domain in the same service. They also have a customer support that it's really helpful. I've used it plenty of times in the past and they're extremely responsive. So do make use of that if you run into any difficulties while building your web app. You can use my code ELSA10 for a 10% discount of your first month. It includes a seven day free trial and for your complete peace of mind, they have a 30 day money back guarantee. I hope this video encouraged you to take action and create that product that you always dreamed of building. And as always, I'm rooting for you and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.